And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for August 15th. Well, the uh, shocks continue for the Atlantic this season. Kyle has now formed off the east coast of the United States. The 11th storm of the Atlantic hurricane season so far, well, well ahead of the average at this time of just over three. Day 76 of hurricane season, two other areas of interest behind each cyclone, retrospectively there, are 10% behind Josephine, 30% behind Kyle, which will be moving off the US East Coast. Day 93 in the Eastern Pacific, which is where the most of the activity is at, although only one tropical cyclone so far, three areas of moderate to high chance in the Eastern Pacific and two small chances in the Central Pacific. In the Western Pacific, we've also marked a 20% chance for an area of interest far to the east there, not far from the international dateline. It will gradually move northwest. No systems active in the Indian Ocean at this time. This is the basin, the only one that doesn't have any activity along with the southern hemisphere. So looking at Tropical Storm Josephine right now, 40 mile an hour winds, pressure 1,004 millibars. Kyle also at 40 miles per hour, but Josephine's the closest uh, to a land impact, 335 miles east-northeast of Barbuda. The storm's expected to travel towards the west-northwest and probably weaken to a depression not too far in the future. It might last a little bit longer than what we're depicting here. will probably still be a tropical depression when it moves over Bermuda on day 4 or 5. As for Kyle, it's moving out to sea and shouldn't be affecting any land areas. You can just about see it on the very top edge there of your screen just off shot slightly. Josephine quite clearly distinguishable there in the central Atlantic not far from the uh, Leeward Islands and it will pass comfortably to the north uh, maybe just a tiny bit of rainfall for the islands and the Gulf of Mexico looking fairly quiet thunderstorms blowing up across all shores really apart from uh, Texas. The East Pacific then, you can see all of this flurry of activity, Tropical Depression 10 on the far left hand side there, that is still the only actual tropical cyclone. Three areas of interest though, you've got the two that are quite clearly visible there in the centre of your picture and on the right hand side over Central America we're expecting that next area to emerge pretty soon and that will become likely to become a significant tropical cyclone. The Western Pacific I'm generally looking pretty quiet. The uh, invest that we are looking at, I think, is a little bit off the screen on the right hand side, but you look further towards the west there, there's general th uh, pop up thunderstorms around the Philippines, Taiwan, and off towards the Indochina region. In the South Pacific, you've got a few more blow ups of thunderstorms, but the winter pattern continues and nothing really of note in this area at all. And in the North Indian Ocean, uh, we are still looking at the monsoonal patterns with significant amounts of rain on the East Indian coast in the last 6 to 12 hours. So let's see how the sea surface temperatures are doing. Still 30 degrees plus over a fair area of the Eastern Pacific and expanding a little bit actually further out to sea. So you can't completely write off this Eastern Pacific hurricane season. There's certainly potential for a significant strong hurricane certainly in the next week or two. In the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico, very warm now. You can see the northern half there, plus 30 degrees, more than that. Uh, the southern coast of Cuba, 32 in one or two areas. And the very strong uh, Gulf Stream there, uh, high temperatures all the way out over towards the central Atlantic. It's uh, somewhat frightening ahead of what we're expecting this season. The North Indian Ocean, temperatures up to around 30 degrees in one or two little pockets off the coast of India either side. Um, generally average temperatures there and in the Western Pacific we have high sea surface temperatures over most of the Philippine Sea up towards the Japanese islands there's no shortage of fuel here in this basin uh, even though it is having a very very quiet start it will probably slip to around six or seven storms behind the pace by the end of the month Looking at the sea surface temperature anomalies once again, the Western Pacific above average, the Eastern Pacific half and half, the Atlantic uh, mostly above average, still that small area that's just slightly below uh, near where Isaias and Hanna tracked earlier in the month. Um, and off the US, the Northeast coast there, very warm anomalies. We don't have 
imagery of Kyle on the uh, Noah floaters just yet, so this is another look at Josephine. However, you can track Josephine and Kyle on live streams on our YouTube channel on Force 13. There are live streams of both storms running on their own along with our 24-7 tracker. But Josephine there not looking quite so good as it has done recently. I think most people are giving up hope that it will get to um, a uh, high-end or even a mid-range tropical storm at this point. Um, but can't rule out the latter of those. Um, still a little window for it, but it would appear at this point that uh, Josephine will weaken to below tropical storm status in around two or three days. Still convection blowing up significantly, it's fighting wind shear, you can quite clearly see that, especially on the west and south side of the storm. Uh, but still making a fist of it, a battle right there with the convection blowing up above minus 70 degrees. Um, so this is uh, for Kyle, I believe, yes. So the uh, HWRF there expecting nearly a hurricane out of this. Uh, wind shear will rise quite steeply very soon actually. Um, and looking at sea surface temperatures, very warm as noted, uh, you know, because the sea surface temperatures are extending up there, the storm has more of a chance than usual, relative humidity will start dropping a little bit, but as you can see it will stay out to sea. For Josephine, I think Hmon is uh, having a little bit of a crisis, but the other models are pretty low, 40 knots the maximum by the looks of things there. Wind shear to rise even further it's only low to moderate right now actually 10 to 15 but it will get up to 30 sea surface temperatures will rise but it will not be enough to offset the effects of wind shear we think the track forecast takes it towards the northwest and not a threat to land at least for the next three or four days so on august 15th 1985 two different atlantic tropical cyclones existed hurricane danny was making landfall in louisiana as a category one Claudette was also a Category 1 out at sea. In the Western Pacific, Mamie was a tropical storm and Lee was dissipating over, um, well, over eastern Russia actually, and an unnamed tropical depression existed in the Gulf of Tonkin. That's all that happened on this day on August 15th, but uh, there's a few interesting ones coming up in the days ahead. See if you can guess any of them. In the meantime, back in 2020, the next name on the Atlantic naming list believe it or not would be laura already followed by marco in the eastern pacific the next name is fausto followed by genevieve in the central pacific hone is still waiting to be selected for list one uh, no storms have taken it up on that offer just yet in the western pacific the next name is higos followed by bavi and in the north indian ocean the next name on list one is gatti uh, in the Southern Hemisphere, things will be firing up later in the year, not just yet, but Imogen is the next name in the Australian region, followed by Joshua. The Southwest Indian Ocean will kick off with Alicia, followed by Bongoyo, and the South Pacific's next name is Yolanda. That's all for now, we'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night. You can track Josephine and Kyle live on our YouTube channel's dedicated live streams. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an ultimate fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan Benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.